Hi guys, welcome to Winsome Cottage Garden. My name is Hannah and I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. We're in the home garden. In fact, if you saw my last video, this is quite literally where we left off. For me, it was about a minute or two ago. For you, it was a couple days. We're working in a bed that we spent a lot of time in this season. Well, actually, we created this season is probably a better way to say it. Um, we are on the west side of the house and are working to finish up the bed that we um, added there including a space that will become a trash cart area. If you missed my last video, I'll link it below and you'll kind of get a lay of the land there a lot better. Already started this project. We've got space cleared, we've got cardboard down and plants are placed. We're gonna be diving in right now to get stuff planted and mulch it up. And then I will give you a look at the finished product and details on any of the plants that I have. You're gonna notice if you saw the last video that there's been some time lapse. There are now a lot of leaves on the ground. I'm just going to work around them. They'll get mulched over. No big deal. This is going to be quite a time consuming project because there's a lot of cables in this area. So we're doing hand digging. There's also a lot of roots in this area. So that's going to be a little bit trickier. And I have no idea how long this is going to take. It only seems to take a little bit longer than I think it will. Anyway, let's get you guys set up. We'll dive into the area and see how far we get. I'm sure this is going to span a couple days. My goal is to work two hours tonight, and then I'll pick it back up again tomorrow. Okay, I'm just kind of hiding from the wind a bit, so hopefully the audio is not bad. I am hand digging. As I mentioned earlier in this video, this video, the last video, if I haven't mentioned it, I was able to do some augering towards the back of the fence because I knew there were no cables here. As I get closer to the path, I know there's cables. Um, and I just found one, which I'm pretty sure is the one that my, I mentioned my dad cut. 
long story short, when my dad was putting in the trash cart return, and I mentioned this in that part one video, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it below. There was a cable that was pretty far away from all of our marked lines uh, that he accidentally cut. It was just internet, so could have been worse. Um, and I just discovered it. And I knew it was probably in this area, but that's why I've been going so dang slow. What I've been doing, in case you're curious, is cutting out the grass or the moss in the case maybe, and then just kind of slowly going down and cutting roots around the hole. I'm using this from Gardner Supply Company. Game changer. It goes through things so well. Makes it easier. I'm going to have to wind this hole a bit. As you can see, the root mat is quite thick. And this right here is why I'm going so slow. That is my internet cable. Don't want to cut it again. Uh, so now that I know that, unfortunately, I'm lucky it wasn't in the middle of my hole. But I am going to have to expand the hole this way. And or cut this root ball down so it will fit. I thought it would just pop in and mention that and show you what they look like if you've never seen a berry cable. Okay, this bed is all planted and mulched. It's looking great. I was going to film this later, but then I saw that there's a thunderstorm with potentially dime and nickel sized hail coming. And I thought I should film this before it's covered in leaves and all my beautiful plants are destroyed. Hopefully it misses us. But I did want to give you a closer look at where things ended up and give you some more plant details. So let's give you an overview of the bed. I'm currently standing in what will be the trash cart area. And as you can see, these were all planted this morning. I actually watered this because the rain is a pop-up freak storm. And then these were, it's already leafy, were planted yesterday and mulched. So right here we have Brennera. Now these are mostly Sailor's Heart Brennera. In fact, one, two, three, four, definitely Sailor's Heart. This looks like a different variety to me. So I kind of stuck it in the back. Uh, and they will kind of spread around as time goes on. I did leave a spot right here. I don't think I talked about it in this video, but I have a pencil, sky pencil holly that is gonna be moved and popped right here. It's this one, actually. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It was planted by the previous owners. They get about three feet wide and six to nine feet tall. Uh, and I, I keep catching myself as I walk around it. I'm gonna have to groom it, it looks a little sad. So here it is going to go and if I kind of pop, I think it will provide some beautiful vertical interest there. And then the brenner around it in the spring will be really pretty blue flower. They're gonna get a lot bigger than they are right now. These are all babies from the cottage garden. Um, so they'll probably get mm, 
18 to 24 inches wide and then their bloom stalks will be about that tall as well and these are pretty small leaves they'll usually they'll end up being like eight inches as well so they'll be like a really pretty sea of silvery foliage and you can see up close how it looks now also looking up close the toad lilies that i added in here i do not know what variety these are they came from my old house but i had two pots and one of them was a lot bigger so i split it that one in two so i have three right here that'll be a really pretty late fall interest that's when these plumes of like orchid like flowers will pop up these are looking kind of sad because they've been in containers all year i'm actually swinging to this back fence area this is a chocolate cherry stilby i don't think i have the stats on it but i have planted it in multiple areas before i absolutely love it it is quite tall it's going to get probably 30 plus inches tall and wide and then when it puts on bloom stalks that'll be more like three plus feet so i thought that would be a really nice anchor at the back of this bed with cherry colored blooms plumes when they go i have planted them before i don't know where the tag is so i'll see if i can link a video below where we put these in the cottage garden they usually also have and i think this just didn't get enough sun but um a little bit more like dark brownie purpley color foliage so that i thought would be pretty against the fence as well we have a oak leaf hydrangea from my friend julie I don't know what variety specifically this is, but I know it's different than the ones we've been planting in the back, which are ice crystal. Judging by the ones at her house, I think that these will probably get five to six tall and wide. And I had a really big pot that I actually split and planted three different stands of them. So here's one. I'll finish going through this bed and then I will show you where the other two ended up a little bit closer. So that is kind of this back area. Um, if we move forward, this one I do have a tag for. This is an ostrich plume a still being I picked up because I really liked the one at the cottage that we had of this. Now, what I love about this, and you can see from this picture, is the it's a very, like, floppy flower that looks like a feather that has fallen over. Astilbes tend to be more upright, and I think this is unique. And it also gets quite big. Let's see, you can see center shade. It'll get up to 36 inches tall, 24 inches wide, zones three through eight. That height is with the plumes. So the toad lilies won't get quite that tall. Now these are the tall ones I have. So I think they'll get about three feet. Um, but when I cut back this after the plume, they'll be able to shine in the fall. So this will come up, be really interesting. This will come up, be really interesting. They're more like early to midsummer. They kind of go back and then the toad lilies will take over interest. Eventually this will be a really pretty hydrangea that's different from these guys, which are um, quick fire fab hydrangeas. Anyway, I also I should mention, I tucked a bleeding heart in here, just a common bleeding heart, again, a baby from my parents' yard. So that's what these are. Oh, this one is a, Hellebore Linton Rose I picked up. This is a Honeymoon Series Linton Rose by Proven Selections. And it's Paris and Pink. And look how pretty that is. 18 to 24 inches tall. And about 18 to 24 inches wide. Hardy in zones 4 through 9. So I think it is very happy to get out of its situation. This was actually... I picked it up from Garden Center not quite near me but not too far away called crossroads i think and they specialize in proven winners stuff because um proven winner selections and color choice shrubs is actually based fairly close to me uh and so they are close to them and they're, they specialize in that they had a lot of plants and i bought this earlier this summer in those biodegradable pots which i'm sure work really well for annuals it did not hold up at all in my hoard it like disintegrated so then it was just this little pot that i stuck in another pot because it's a root ball so i'm hope i'm glad it survived and i'm hoping it will thrive now that it's in dirt and not exposed i also picked up at that same place and this is looking a little sad so please forgive it and 
I think it's a little anemic again. I think it should do a lot better. And hopefully the leaves will kind of look better when they, now that it's in the ground, getting proper nu nutrients and stuff. This is another proven winter selection. You can see this tag kind of broke, but you can still see it. It is, this one is a another honeymoon series. And this one's called Tropical Sunset. And look, look at how beautiful that is. I can't wait. I hope it makes it, it's looking kind of sad. If we look at the stats, it's again 18 to 24 tall and wide, and this one is a zone 4 through 9 as well. And again, these guys do pretty well in some pretty shady conditions. Moving on, I added a hosta. Now this guy is a really, this is a baby. Let's see. I know its tag is in here. It should be. Yeah, it broke too. These guys probably sat too long. This I did not get at that place, though it is a Proven Winners. This is a Shadowland Water Slide by Proven Winners. And it is got this really pretty blue foliage that I thought would bring a pop right here and kind of mirror some of the like silvery of the Brennera, but it's not super tall, but it does get pretty wide. It's gonna be a little difficult to show you. Short, 14 inches tall, but can get up to 32 inches wide and is hardy in zones three through nine. So, a little, little baby. Like I got it for like 250. I thought for 250 because it was on clearance. It was pretty well. This is a hosta that we actually took out when we moved the boxwoods from the sunbed to the front. This had to be moved to go in. And I thought it would complement some of the ones we planted last time. Let's see, this was already here. It's a hellebore. Um, I have some pewter, lamium. This I got from my friend Julie, who also gave me the oak leaf hydrangeas. So I don't know exactly what variety. I suspect it's called ghost. Looking at its leaf pattern, similar to the Bronera, it's got that silvery texture. But it's like a ground cover that I thought would be pretty right along the path. And again, provide like a trio of that blue. So like one, two, three. And kind of let it take over. Um, we have another stilby that came from the old house. I know this used to be by my hydrangea tree. But that's all I know about it. It's not a, as big as those two. I think it probably gets 18 to 20 tall and wide. So it might be a little far forward. But... I thought it would be nice. And what's nice about it is in the spring when the hellebores are doing their show, it will actually just be really small because it gets cut back. And then when they're done and they're just foliage, it will kind of take over and fill the space. That's one thing I really spent a lot of time thinking about when I was placing things was different seasons. I'm going to have to live with this a while. It seems very full, but there's actually probably a lot more space I could fill in here. Uh, and as the seasons progress and I kind of see what type of interest I need when that'll help inform the rest of what I do um okay and I should mention I don't know if I I don't think I explained this so I should mention the lamium came from my friend Julia which is in the holding area I did have pots of lamium here that were kind of like spot holders when I was planting that actually belonged to my parents I have a small stash of plants over there that they've forgotten the last two times they've been here so I need to take them next time I go up. Help me when planning. And now I have this slightly unknown lamium that will flower in the spring and again probably in the fall. Man, I can feel the air changing a little bit so I'm glad I came out and did this now. Rounding out this area, uh, we do have a foxglove that I grew from seed. I don't remember exactly what kind it is but it's an odd type. Um, so it doesn't look like a traditional foxglove. That's this guy right here. I don't know if it'll survive. Hopefully it will. And we'll kind of fill this area. It's got like orangey-ish blooms. But right here we have a beautiful hookera. Let's see. Pop the tag in here. This is a proven winner's one. Look how black it is. It's actually a primo black pearl hookera. It's a perennial of the year, sun to shade, and it's pretty versatile. Looking at it, it stays pretty short, only 8 to 10 tall, but it will get about 26 to 30 inches wide, which is pretty big. And it's hardy in zones 4 through 9. And I really wanted to work some purple foliage in here. I'm hoping that the chocolate cherry still be brings some added dimension. And it's 
but we needed for layering purposes purple. And so most of my hookah resin here actually are purple. So we have this one. We also have this guy, which I have the tag right here. It's a uh, hookah called Smoke and Mirrors. Now this one, it was only part shade. So I put it where it gets a little bit more sun. And it's 12 to 14 tall, 20 to 26 wide, hardy zones four through nine. Oh, actually, this is new too. It's a mousier tasta. So it's a pretty low growing one that I thought would be pretty right near the path. But here is the last hookah we planted. And isn't that just so pretty? I love the colors. This one is a Dolce Wild Berry Hookera, sun to shade. And again, is 10 to 14 tall, 16 to 20 wide, and is hardy in zones four through nine. So I think that this is just gonna fill in beautifully. We did, we planted this up earlier this year. Uh, if you missed it, I will try and find the video and link it below. So this is, this used to be grass this time last year. Actually, this was grass this time in like April. And we kind of carved it out. Most of these plants are from my old house. And then we added, some of these were some new ones as well. Uh, and I think the plan here, which I did explain in the last video, is to put a trellis up and get some clematis there. So that'll hide trash carts. But I think it's gonna be like this really lush shade area. Man, there's this pretty maple here. Really made getting stuff in the ground. Quite difficult. I did want to walk down here and show you where I put those two other oak leaf hydrangeas. Now, here is this bed, long view-wise. Um, these are the quick fire fab. This tree right here, I think, is a linden tree. It's my neighbor's tree. I like it. It's pretty. Um, and I think someone told me it was a linden tree. That sounds right. But it casts quite a bit of shade. Long story short, I'm actually going to be shifting this bed line next year. So, since this is a very shady spot, my oak leaf hydrangeas do better in the shade. I planted one here and one here. And I think I could probably get another one from Julie or split one of these eventually. So the plan is to put a third one here eventually. Maybe even a fourth right here. So it's a really big stand. That's what this is. And the fall color on these is amazing. So this... If you're saying, why did you plant it so close to the edge? The plan is eventually this is going to kind of tie into my neighbor's bed. Uh, so it won't be at the edge. I'm trying to decide how much I trust that this thunderstorm is coming. I'd already started um, watering the back of this bed. Um, and I needed to move the sprinkler. But if it's going to rain, I might as well use rainwater. So maybe I'll give it a little bit because it's supposed to roll in the next hour. And if it doesn't, then I'll finish watering this bed. That was this project. Thanks for sticking around and coming back. I appreciate it. We got 18 pots from the plant hoard into this bed. There's more plants because we ended up splitting quite a few of them. Uh, but 18 pots out of my goal of 60 to 75. Progress. So that's moving me a lot closer to my goal of getting... 60 to 75 or so in the ground this year. I really want to get them all in the ground. I don't think that's realistic. Um, and I said, I think at the beginning of this video, I had 127 plants in my plant hoard. That was after I planted the sunbed. So if I had added those, it would have more like been like 190 something. So if you think about that, that means there's 78 planted. So I'm doing pretty well, but I recounted afterwards. So 127 another 18 off the list and there's more to come. So we are going to be back. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to the cottage next. I, I'm coming. I, I've got some upcoming projects at the cottage. I don't know if that's what you're going to see next or if we're going to be doing some other things. We do have a lot to get in the yard here with over a hundred plants in the plant hoard. Um, needing to get in the ground. So it's likely the next video you see will be another area being transformed. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe, share it with your friends, uh, and check back. I really appreciate you joining me today and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye.